you guys just observed, some things don't always go the way you planned. That's what I was able to gather after it blew apart in the lathe. Thought about trying to glue it back together. I found all the pieces except for one little white segment in here, but I'm not doing that anymore. I think what we're going to do, I'm going to cut another sliver off of this. If I hadn't already cut this one, I would have used this. But this was the practice piece that I had on the bandsaw. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I'm going to cut a sliver off of this and we're going to turn it down really thin and we're going to laminate it in between this piece just as we had initially talked about and then we'll do the white on either side of it and then we'll see what we can do with some aluminum but I'm scrapping the segmented thing not my thing I'll worry about it some other time but I did learn some stuff this time <laughs> what happened before is it overheated caused one of the epoxy joints to come loose and then kind of domino affected from there so I'm gonna try one more time with the same drill bit because I'm afraid the three-quarter inch metal drill bit will catch I just I feel more comfortable with this style drill bit for drilling into something delicate we'll see what it does <laughs> So I've got away with that one. Ah, it still chipped out the back side. It's okay because we're going to turn it down to where there's just a sliver in there and uh, we'll see if we can still make something out of it. Try not to do that with your tooling. It's not good for it. happening as I try to cut it's pushing it back this way because the mandrel's not able to hold it good enough. Can't put that in any further. Rather than trying to take this off and turn it around the other way to face the back side, it's not going to get, it's not going to be perfectly centered or perfectly squared up on the mandrel. So I'm going to leave it in place here. I'll put a different bit in. We may have to adjust a couple things to get everything to turn around at 90 degrees.
looks like that other bit was a little bit dull and it was causing some some pulsating as it was going around and making the cut so going back to the original bit seemed to help now it's pushed it off to where we were at so we've got to come back and cut that side again got to be the thinnest piece of wood I've ever turned on a mandrel, I can say that. .07, somewhere in there, .066, so that's going to be our We'll call it a washer that goes in between the black acrylic. So the next thing I'm going to do is run this tool rest back up against the, the lathe chuck and set it at perfect 90 degrees. <laughs> see me do is I switch back to another mandrel. This one's a three-quarter. Every now and then I'll switch to a five-eighths and then I'll zero out my digital readout over here. I'm wanting to do a lamination on this band to a three-quarter inch measurement. I'm going to run this all the way in to touch the mandrel and then set the zero. Oops. Gotta make sure this goes in. <laughs> Set the zero there. And then we'll know whenever we run it back in, it'll be at three quarters of an inch, which is what we're shooting for for the depth on the lamination. We'll go to the bandsaw, I'll cut it in half, and then we'll have the two pieces that we can glue back together to make the uh, sandwiched band. quarter inch multi-purpose or multi-angle drill bit that I was using on the lathe which is probably the reason it was building up so much heat and blew that laminated piece into several different pieces. All I'm going to do now is drill a three-quarter inch hole. I use this bit because it kind of has a, a pilot point down here and then these outside edges will cut through the material and we'll just leave you the little circle stuck to the bit. I've got a piece of hardwood flooring that had foam on the back of it and that kind of gives it a soft cushion to drill into and that helps whenever you're trying to hold things still. I do this with aluminum or plastic. I go ahead and put it in. I don't clamp it down. I just put it in there to where it's kind of squared up and that'll keep it from trying to spin on you whenever you're drilling.
the idea of the aluminum, but I think the just the green and the white actually will set it off better. The aluminum may wind up not offering enough contrast on the green, so we're going to go with this. So now that the African Blackwood's been turned down to 5 8 dowel all the way across, I'm going to set this to the side and this is going to be the, the piece that receives the African Blackwood tone board. This is bored at a half an inch, so I'm going to mount this on the lathe, turn it round, and then I'll do some measurements and decide how far this needs to be turned down before I actually cut the tenon for this part to fit inside. I was going to do some measuring. I'm going to put the tenon in here. That gives me an idea of how long I need to actually make the tone board. Then this will give me an idea of how much length I need for the rest of the insert. So I want this to run all the way through the entire insert. So I'm going to go a little bit conservative and mark past that. Then I'm going to take this over to the miter saw, cut that off, and then we'll start turning down the half inch tenon here that will fit in the bottom side of the insert. One thing I did forget is we're going to go ahead and cut the o-ring groove on here before I do any of the turning down on the tenon. <laughs>
Now I'm going to epoxy the African Blackwood tone board into the bottom side of the insert, which is the base is going to be Burmese Blackwood. And then we'll cut a piece of this green dyed material and we'll laminate it inside of here, similar to how we did with the barrel. One comment that I will make for call makers is if you're going to use epoxy for integral laminations, bands, uh, anything that you can think of, accent work, inlay, anything like that, Loctite epoxy is extremely good. It's a good product. There's nothing wrong with it. One thing I will say is the Instamix tubes are not friendly for call makers. Once you put this on, it's a really interesting application. It, it goes on the tube, you squeeze it out, it mixes inside the, the nozzle, and then you can apply it straight to anything that you want to glue together or anything you want to epoxy. The problem is, is you only get to do it once. This nozzle is only good for one time. So after you wait the five minutes, it's a five minute set time. After you wait the five minutes, you might as well throw this nozzle away. It's junk. The other problem with, and, and that's not that big of a deal. It, it's not that I dislike this product because of this. I think this is perfect for certain applications. For call making, it's not really relevant. You're going to use the tube of epoxy several more times than, than just once or twice. I think two nozzles come in, come in the pack. After I realized the nozzles were only one time use, I thought, okay, it's not that big a deal. I'll just put the cap on. I'll use the cap and then I can reuse it a couple times. As you can see, the cap does not keep the hardener and the resin separate very well. So you have to work with it. Every time you go to take this apart, you have to work to get the cap off of it just so you can reuse the bottle again. By the time you get it off, your knife, your hand, the whole tube, everything's got half mixed epoxy all over it again. Therefore, I do not believe this product is good for call making. If you go online or if you go to Walmart and you see this, there should be another tube of Loctite similar to this, a little bit bigger syringe, and it's got kind of a kidney-shaped block right here in the middle for the cap. That's what you want to get for call making. That kidney-shaped cap only goes on the nozzles one way, and it'll allow you to keep both sides separate to where it doesn't mix in the cap and epoxy your cap on. Gorilla Brand has a similar thing. It's a larger syringe as well. It's five minute uh, set time, it dries clear. It works just as well as any other epoxy. This is what I normally use. The other thing is the cap. And you can see the syringes, the, where the syringes actually output are separated. So you don't get mix of the two different parts of the epoxy in the cap. The other thing is is the cap has a little slot right there and there's a slot on this side so you can only put it in one way. And that's similar to the way Loctite's product is. It's just a kidney shape to where it only goes on the nozzle one way. So if you're doing epoxy work and call making, get this style tube. You'll be able to reuse it time and time again with no issues. This one is a good product. It works just as well. If you have to direct apply something without mixing or you have you don't have a whole lot of time to put the epoxy together before you apply it and glue it, this is a good product as well. If you're gonna glue something that would take the entire tube at one time, the Instamix nozzles are very good for that. It's just not good for reuse as far as call making goes. Now you can see what a mess that is. There's no way to keep them separate. You can see the big glob on the end of it here. By the time I put this cap on, even if I pull this back and try to suck some of the air back through it, it's going to be even harder to get that cap off the next time, but I'll worry about that next time.
post-it notes are the best thing to mix epoxy on because as soon as you get done mixing it up you can peel it off you still got a clean pad and you can throw this part away and you don't have to worry about sticking your hand in it the next time you you work on the bench or anything like that before it dries So now I'm getting ready to drill a 7 8 diameter hole inside the band. That way it'll be able to sleeve over the outside of the barrel. Uh, I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I will slow the lathe down and then I'm going to use a Forstner bit to, to take this out rather than using the multi-angle drill bit or a metal drill bit. And we'll see how that goes.